Hello, welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on the profitability ratios. As you can imagine, this is the ratios that management and investors tend to pay the most attention to. Um, and we are going to introduce three ratios, and then we're going to introduce something called the DuPont identity to help us um, further evaluate the um, the causes or the drivers behind um, each ratio. So the first ratio um, is the profit margin. Profit margin, as you can see, is net income divided by sales. And both items comes from the income statement. So for, to compute the profit margin is relatively straightforward. In our example, net income is $171,550 and sales is $850,000. So our net profit margin turns out to be about 20%. Okay, great. Did you get the same answer? Again, as what we have done before, I encourage you to pause the video and try to compute this number on your own. The next uh, ratio is return on asset. So here we take net income divided by total asset. Net income comes from the income statement and total asset comes from the balance sheet. We already talked about which years of the balance sheet we should use. For the purpose of this example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the ending or year one balance sheet value. So go ahead and pause the video, uh, use your balance sheet and income statement and compute return on asset. And then come back to the video and check your answer. Did you get 5.0554 uh, or 5.514%? If you do, terrific. If you don't, again, go back to your income statement. Um, you should get net income with no problem. Total asset, did you get 3.09 million, uh, million dollars? So again, a lot of this is just practice at looking for the right information. Last, lastly, we're going to compute return on equity. So once again, pause the video and go ahead and do the calculation and come back and we'll check the answer. Terrific. Now let's take a look at what each of these ratios tells us. So for profit margin, that tells you that tells us the profitability of the firm. So what this number here tells us is that for every dollar that the firm generate in revenue, it produces a net income of 20 cents. So that's a really high profit margin. So um, every uh, uh, on the another way of looking at this is the um, the cost, the overall expenses, including cost of goods sold, and all the other expenses included, is about 79.8% uh, or 71, uh, 79 percent. So this is a highly profitable uh, firm. The next ratio, return on asset, tells us how much net income we are able to generate for every dollar that we invest in assets. So for this particular company, for every dollar that we put into total asset, we can generate about five cents. So uh, there's a big difference between profit margin and return on asset. Uh, we can, one of the reason, and we saw that a little bit earlier, uh, was that this company has a very low turnover. And uh, we will see later on in the DuPont identity how we can use that in combination to, to see what is driving the overall profitability of the firm. The number that most stockholders focuses on, so this is a number that is very important to upper management as well as investors, because stockholders look at ROE, return on equity, which tells them how much net income the firm is generating per dollar equity that they invest into the firm. This is also important for upper management because they will be answerable to stockholders who, again, is primarily interested return on their investment, which in this case will be equity. So for this particular company, the ROE is 6.98%. So it tells us that for every dollar they put into the firm, it, the firm generates about seven cents in net income. Now, the ROA and ROE, the difference between the two is solely due to leverage. If a company does not borrow any money at all, ROA and ROE will be the same. 
the higher the leverage, the more a company borrows, then the higher will be the ROE relative to ROA. So in some ways, a company can increase its return on equity simply by increasing its leverage. However, increasing its leverage inc also increases risk. So you're yeah, getting a higher risk in, to trade for a higher return. Uh, later on in this, in this class, we're going to look at how can we evaluate that trade-off. But at this point, just keep in mind that you are not gain, getting a higher return for free. You're getting a higher return, a higher ROE when you use leverage because you're taking on additional risk. And of course, ROE, as I said earlier, is the most important number, um, and a lot of times it, is, uh, it, it garners an extraordinary amount of attention from upper management and investor. So it makes sense for us to take a deeper look into uh, what makes up our ROE. This uh, decomposition is sometimes called the DuPont identity or the DuPont equation or the DuPont decomposition. Uh, that's because the economist, the first thing of looking at it this way, his name is DuPont. Uh, basically, the same approach can be used to analyze any kind of ratios. What we are trying to do here is to decompose the return on equity into three different components so that it gives us a better idea on what are the driving factors behind ROE. So if you see in this equation, if we do cancellation, all this will cancel out and we'll end up with net income divided by equity, which of course is the ROE equation. So the DuPont identity is basically an algebra expansion of uh, the original ROE equation. So let's take a look at what this individual component represent. So the first one, net income divided by sales, that is simply profit margin. So our first component here is profit margin. The second component is sales divided by assets. And we also have seen that. So sales divided by assets is total asset turnover. So that's total asset turnover. That's component number two. And the last component is asset divided by equity. Again, we have seen that asset divided by equity is the equity multiplier. So those are the three components. And profit margin measures profitability. Total asset turnover measures efficiency. And equity multiplier measures the use of leverage. So by decomposing the ROE into these three factors, we can see whether or not return on equity was driven primarily by profit, profitability, efficiency, or leverage. Since we already do this calculation before, I'm going to ask you to pause the video, go back over your notes, and find out the value that you have computed for profitability, total asset turnover, and equity multiplier and use those val those numbers to compute ROE. Are you able to find the numbers that we computed before? And if you multiply the three of them together, you should not be surprised, we also get 6.98%. And by looking at the individual component, you will be able to have a better understanding of what drives the ROE for this particular firm. And the way that you do this is you compare each of these components against a competitor or the industry average. And if you and you, you may find that in this particular case, this company has a very high profit margin, but a very low turnover ratio. And it has a moderate leverage. So the primary driver behind its return on equity tend to be seems to be profitability. And you may find that uh, compared to other uh, competitors or the industry, this may be in line because a lot of times profit margin and efficiency is um, driven a lot by the industry characteristics. So this may very well be a company that operate in an industry that has very low turnover. So perhaps this is an antique dealer or an arc dealer, uh, but very high profit margin. Uh, you are un it's unlikely for you to see such a low turnover ratio and such a high profit margin for a retail store. Let's say a grocery store, that would be the exact opposite. And a grocery store, you expect to see very, very high turnover. Things stay on the shelf maybe for half a day or a day, and then profit margin will be very, very low. 
Um, so to get a better understanding, we're gonna you do a project that allow you to apply this in the real life. We'll end the video here. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at the next set of ratios, which are market value ratios.